learned the ingredients to the perfect burrito. Damn! Sick. <clears throat> As you know, the crew has been working hard all week. Ren and Sam just finished anime self-driving cars. Sam just had a baby. Everything's going good, so I'd like to do something special today. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna make the boys my famous breakfast burritos. Now here's the thing about these breakfast burritos. They're not just any breakfast burritos, meaning everyone in your life who eats them will believe that they're world famous because that's how good they are. Does that make sense? No, I don't know. It doesn't matter. The point is, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Well, how do I know how to do this? Well, when I first moved to California, I worked in a Mexican restaurant as a cook, and I learned the ingredients to the perfect burrito. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you might also remember that I had a 1967 Ford F100 that I was having worked on, and it's done. Rebuilt the engine, rebuilt the third member in the back and the rear axle, put posi traction in it, disc brakes in the front, power steering, done all kinds of nonsense. But basically this motor is the same original casting. It's a Ford 390, a 71 motor. We don't exactly know what vehicle <laughs> it came out of. And we basically took out all the old parts, put all new parts in it, replaced all the gaskets, included a brand new aluminum Edelbrock intake. What does that do? It makes it beautiful and it makes it run really cleanly and smoothly. Hey man. Let me get that for you. <laughs> I do like the inside of these doors though. Well and if you need to work on the door you just take off that panel. That's the nice oh, thing. No! Yeah, that's the that's the nice thing about old cars is that they were so simple. I mean simplicity comes with limitations. Acknowledged. Check. But it also comes with freedom. So I still have to, I, I need to put new wheels on it. I need to give it a new paint job and then I need to restore the interior. So to do that, it's gonna be like another, yeah. So <laughs> not gonna do that now, but in time, that's what that's where I wanna go with it. So it kinda drives like a Crown Vic. One of my favorite features of the old Fords is the corner window, air conditioning. Mm. And it's kind of a sleeper. It runs really smoothly, but it has it's a it has monster torque. It's got posi traction, so you know. We're here to get the ingredients for the world famous breakfast burritos, and as I go through and purchase them, I'll tell you guys what's in the recipe. First things first, we need eggs. Need some tortillas. The bigger the better when it comes to tortillas. The selection of bacon is always uh, critical. Where are you going? and the cheese. They have like the, the American version of the Mexican three cheese. Uh, but if you can find it, finding some like queso fresco. So it comes in these blocks. And then you just break it up a little bit and you mix it in there. It's really good. I'm gonna take all these ingredients home with me. We, we have an opportunity to make a PUBG video with a budget right now. Exactly. And the only constraints are is that they want us to have this van in it. We have a van that we're working out. We have access to Spencer's desert house. That's kind of where things are at. I wanted to have this meeting so that we could go over a more in-depth creative course, talk about like who's gonna be in it, and just all the stuff, how we're gonna go about making it. Given how branded videos have been performing over the last few months here, I think it's just really important to make sure we, we do it the way we do any other video, and keep it collaborative, and keep it fun, and, yeah. and not like just throw it into the assembly line. I agree, it needs to be a good video. It should have some, some, some. The only constraints are they want the van, they want the Miramar map, and they would like it to show someone inside of a vehicle shooting. Okay. Out of the vehicle. Yeah. It's easy, yeah. Outside of the constraints of maybe having a van in it, the door's wide open for us to kind of do whatever we want. So there's no reason for us to constrain ourselves from making a video that's subpar to what we'd make if we didn't have any constraints, because the constraints are so minor here. Exactly. And I think I think it's I think it's really just the main thing right now where I'm seeing like there's a good foundation. You know, there's the setup. You got these characters. You got a van. What are the PUBG visuals like that go above and beyond just like the van? That obviously we're dealing with the force field, which is a big part of the video. But like really like honing in on what are the best gags we could do. So. You thought this segment was over. It's actually just starting. It's time to make the burritos. It's a lot of food. Just like in life, the key to success is 99% preparation and about 1% luck. We're gonna prepare everything, make sure it's all nice and set out and ready to go when we need it. And then we'll hope for a little bit of luck from Dobie and we'll be, we'll be tasting. Smell that? Hmm. 
first of all, when you mix your eggs, mix everything together first. Now, another key ingredient that people don't know about, cumin. Dude, people freak out. They're like, what is this? It's so good. Why is this so good? Just a, just a dash of curry powder. Dip out the green chilies. You know, you get a couple good ones in there. And then you really, it's really about the juice. I was hoping this would be more tomato roasted salsa. All right, time to mix. And you just mix. We're whisking. Key here is to think of light and fluffy. Never start your eggs before you start your bacon. All right, now let's turn this up to about a medium. Now for the eggs. We flip the bacon, then as the eggs are coming to be done, we put cheese in, and then you prepare the tortillas. Ooh. What's my favorite type of breakfast? A breakfast burrito, obviously. He gets me. I mean, burritos are great because they have all the breakfast things in right. one package. Easy to digest mentally and physically. Dude, I'm super excited. Breakfast is actually my favorite meal of the day, any time of the day. Bacon, eggs, tortillas, sounds like a perfect combination to me. Yo, what's up? Jake's making uh, breakfast burritos. Yum. For everyone. Me too? I mean, that's cool. I'll, I'll, I'll eat it. Try to eat it. Jake, I don't think knows this. I, I can barely stand eggs. For some reason, the taste of eggs just like twists my stomach. So I'm a little, I'm a little uh, hesitant. You don't like eggs? No, man, that's what I said. Do you like eggs? A lot of people don't know how to write good fight scenes because they don't know how they work from a story standpoint. And what makes these, both the one on the hill of Timmy and all that, and the one in the van good, is they're coming at just the perfect moment in the story. We are hitting the climax of our story, and then the fight scene happens at the peak of that mountain. Regardless of how good the fight scene is, that's what makes a good fight scene at the end of the day. Is like the function it serves. So there's yeah. that, but then yeah, the visual spectacle and all that stuff is another big part of it. Competent filmmakers. All right, we were good with the camera, we're good with our narrative. So we check that off. We're gonna make the assumption that we've made it that far. Now we're at the next assumption, which is we're competent fight choreographers. All right, and I would be bold enough to say, let's check that off as well. But I can name other competent filmmakers, and I can name other competent fight choreographers, potentially ones that are even more competent. So how do we then take all that and take it one step above that? And that's that's like we're where a really good, clever story around it that takes place in a world that's true. No, 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 that we've already, I'm, I'm talking about like doing something visual, like we don't need to solve it right now, but I'm, I'm talking about like doing a weird composite trick to make it look like someone's neck gets broken and it's like really like, oh, holy <laughs> Or like doing yeah, a fun trick where we maybe take a helmet and split it in half a little bit and we have a cool shot where you take the pen and you go like, oh, boom, and you see it's a person's like helmet go like, and break off their head and like start like getting into like these things that that looks physically impossible unless you actually smash someone's face in with a pan. Okay, no, no, we can do that. Like, we'll come, let's come with a good visual trick. So, well, I mean, it's unfortunately, it's we're dealing with a pan fight scene that's like literally one of the most brutal ways to kill someone. So we have to kind of just play that up a little bit, we, whether it's face smashing or neck breaking or helmets. You hit the guy with the handle so hard it goes into his skull, and then it's the pan stays stuck to his head for a second. If he to dodge the thing and reach back out and block it, I don't know. We're doing a thing where we have a guy and we just go bonk, and you see his head go, like, <laughs> <laughs> and you hit him again, and the helmet breaks, and you're like, oh, oh, you know, it's like no, it doesn't need to have to be gory sure. specifically. No, we'll do a, we'll do a little visual. Okay, but sure. like that's that's the what I'm thinking about here like giving people shots that are difficult to do They require filmmaking they require storytelling they require fight choreography They require a little bit of the effects and then just straight up a little bit of cleverness and like that's that's what I'm thinking here cool Dope. They heat these up in the microwave to make them nice and soft But you can't do more than two at a time because otherwise they won't heat up correctly All right, who's first? It smells so good up here. You gotta do it fast while the, while the bacon's still hot. Boom, little Mexican sour cream. You want bacon? Yep. All right, a little bit of ham, a little bit of bacon. Ah, my wrist. The more you serve, the lighter it will get, so just keep serving us. <laughs> good call, Danny. All right, now, last step. You have to roll the burrito properly. If you don't roll the burrito properly, you got the cheese in there, right? Cheese. You did the, out of town. the cheese is already in there. Oh, cheese is already in there. Cheese is already in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mexican sour cream. Wow, okay. Burrito roll. Damn. 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 What, what's the first step to a good burrito roll? I see you doing this flattening. Key to a good burrito roll, first and foremost, you make sure that everything that's long is going the long way. Then you take the sides, bring them into the center, and then you spread your fingers out and mash it so that the whole burrito is full. Then around, tuck under, and then roll to fit. Wow. And it's so tight. 
Look at that. One tight ass burrito. Mmm. 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 This is really good, Jake. Dude, you just. Oh, wow. There you go. Y'all are crazy. Yeah, that's I got too much sauce. It was really good. So now you guys know if you ever want to impress your lady, you can get the or your mom, or just have a bomb ass breakfast burrito, just watch this video. Yeah, show her this video of us eating burritos. That'll really impress oh. your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> no, just then you'll know how to make it, Dan. Oh. Dude! Oh, right. Yeah, okay. Man, I have that burrito dunk. Mmm. Yeah. The so. bacon is a great touch. And the guac. Mm. I'm probably just gonna throw the rest of this away. <laughs> it's so good. Salsa brings your acidity. The guacamole, the sour cream brings a little bit of sweetness. The bacon brings some crunch, which is a nice little texture, all in all. Really solid. And cilantro in there, I think it tastes like deliciousness. Was the breakfast burrito invented in Mexico? I really think it was. Burritos aren't Mexican. What are they? They're Tex-Mex. Right, Ooh. So, Sam, Sam ordered some lenses. So check this out. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. Look. So we. So with the full set. Here. Let me. Show, let me just grab them. So we can just talk about them. <laughs> Full set came in from Russia. We started with the 50 here, which is great. Nice and crisp and clean and clear. We followed it up with a 37 mil, and then the other prize gem, which is the 85. The Kami Trio. That's Stalin, nice. Lenin, and Marx right 85, there. 85, 55, 37. Okay, so that's basically enough to give you some real variety there. You could shoot a whole video with these three lenses and keep it uniform in style. However, they use an M42 mount which is not what we use. We use a cannon mount for the red. So we have to use adapters to get these to work. So Amazon, Amazon <laughs> guarantees. I see it. I see a thing. Show them the guarantee, man. Let's see the guarantee. Let's see the guarantee. Give me the guarantee. <laughs> Proceed to check out. I got my extra adapters. The guarantee. I'm using that payment method. Guarantee. Guaranteed delivery April date. April 30th, 20. Guaranteed. That's Monday. That's a guarantee. That means if it doesn't happen, we get our money back. Guarantee. Two day shipping. Two. This place is literally out in the middle of nowhere. Let me let me let me show you <laughs> where this place is. They are guaranteeing a two day shipping to here. So this is where we're filming. All right. Ready? Let me zoom out. Let's keep zooming out until we reach. <laughs> until once, if someone spots a civilization, let me know. Just point it out. All right. Oh, there. By the way, we're still there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and civilization, well, naturally, it shall eventually appear. Oh, wait, was this civil? That? No, that's, that's that? not. Wait, what's that? That's civilization. About somewhere around 70 miles as the crow flies. Guaranteed! <laughs> Two day shipping! So some some poor, innocent, unknowing Amazon delivery contractor is gonna get this package and they're gonna have to make the decision as to whether or not they want to drive a hundred miles one way to drop off a package that's this big and return. My goodness. Well, I sure hope they make it in time. <laughs> if we get that stuff on Monday, we sure could use it. <laughs> and I'll bet you two to one. Two to one? Yeah, that means if it, if it arrives, I owe you 20. If it doesn't arrive on or before the 30th, then you owe me 10. Mm, that's an offer. That's mm. an offer. <laughs> okay. I'll take two to one odds on that. All right. There you go. <laughs> 